We already know what collective agreements are, but how do they actually come about? Let's take a look at that now. There are two options. Either an existing agreement is to be amended, in which case the existing collective agreement will be terminated in due time. This may be the case, for example, if salaries are to be adjusted or a part-time arrangement is to be introduced, or if a company has never had a collective agreement before. For their part, trade unions convene collective bargaining committees to decide on specific demands, which are usually not accepted in full by the employers, however. Representatives of the employer then sit down at the negotiating table with the trade unions, who represent the workforce. This often requires several rounds of negotiations. These can sometimes take weeks or even months. In the meantime, the previous collective agreement stays in effect. This is known as ultra-activity. Collective bargaining is often accompanied by temporary warning strikes, in which workers put down work by the hour. They want to put pressure on the employers. If the bargaining parties do not reach an agreement, despite several rounds of negotiations, they have the option of calling in an independent arbitrator. However, the negotiating parties are not obliged to accept the arbitrator's proposals. No. After much discussion, the employers and trade unions usually agree on a compromise and settle on a collective agreement. Formally, it initially applies only to members of the trade unions. However, most employers also adopt the conditions for all the employees in their companies. The collective agreement is now in force until one of the parties terminates the contract. If no agreement is reached, the union has the option of calling on its workers to go on indefinite strike. But more about that in another video.